Yo, hold on. Close it. Tabuchi Motas da. Alrighty. Hello, everyone. My name is Michael SK, and welcome back to Anonymous Code. I really wish I could give a very detailed explanation as to what happened in the last episode, but it's been about a week since I last recorded here, so I don't exactly remember. But I will say this. There was some information exchanging going on a little bit in the previous episode. We learned a little bit more about Momo, even so I didn't think we learned anything about her for a while or at all, but we got to learn a little bit more about her mission here, and she is definitely on a mission to save the world or something along those lines. Very science adventure-like. And uh, now we're back here, chilling, hanging out, whatever, with all of our uh, lovely cast of characters, and uh, I guess we're getting an update on our bike here. Hopefully well. Oh yeah, yep, nope, that is that is good news. Oh. Well, how big is the tab? I mean, especially if we already have a tab. I mean, come on. I could hand over my whole fee from that recent job, and it still wouldn't cover it. Oi, Dab! なんで急にそんなそっけない対応になるんだよ。お前に彼女がいるのが悪い。とにかく現れないなら修理はできん。あら。考え直せって。シェット。お前が女の子を紹介してくれるんだ。つけてもいい。おう。ワオ。あいど
or this life game about. It's a simulation of life that lets you watch what happens to living cells over the generation. The colored cells are alive, and the colorless cells are dead. The next generation is born when a dead cell has three living neighboring cells. A living cell survives into the next generation if two or three of its neighbors are alive. If a living cell has zero or one living cell around it, it dies from loneliness. If a, if a living cell is surrounded by four or more living cells, it dies from overcrowding. Yep. Okay, I remember this shit. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is kind of coming back to me here. So, uh, still lifes, so these keep surviving and don't change shape, all right? And spaceships, these move as they die, survive, and reproduce in a cycle. So, you know, they'll, they'll continue on over and over and over eventually, I guess. Oscillators, these go back to their original shape after some generations. Yeah. Yeah, I remember this. Okay, so that's kind of what will make it continue to look like there's, you know, movement, like, they're just kind of... Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, it's it's really coming back to me. It's hard to describe it, but... No, this is... This is right. Cool. I should really load up my... Uh, the simulation that my group made. Because it was just in Python. Wow, alright. Cool stuff. I don't know why she's so into the game of life, but... You know, it is very interesting when you think about it. And I'm sure there's a lot of different stuff very similar to it that are pretty interesting to jump into. Uh, anyway, things had settled down, so I figured it was a good time to uh, put a carrier node on Momo. It was a good time to put that on Momo. Giving your access to BMI would make info sharing way smoother. Is this such a good idea? You know, despite the information that we received in the uh, previous episode, we still don't know anything about that digital tattoo that she has on her face. But she's willing to go through with this. She lifted her hair, showing her ear and neck. This was kind of stressful. I'm very surprised with how easygoing she is here. I gently touch her ear. I'm kind of what, like, okay, you know, this is the future, technology is the future, whatever, but, you know, with her mission to save the world and, you know, her also kind of being a target, or at least at one point was, I mean, is this a good idea to put her on the network? I'm a, I'm a little worried here, actually. I don't know if this is a good idea. But that's just me. Worrisome and all. I put her ear... Or I, yeah, I put her ear into the device. A piercing-like electrode slipped into her ear. Remember, guys, we're all beta testers. I had ordered one that afternoon and had it already been delivered. It wasn't some luxury model, but it would get the job done. Clipping it onto the electrode only took a second. And there were people out there with a whole bunch of different carrier nodes that they wore as fashion accessories. Her profile was taken care of, too. Cross and I had gone to get her a forged one. All right. No, that's good. Let's let's continue to use the Momo name. These days, profiles were linked to census data and stuff like that, so it was pretty hard to fake them. That's why we went to a white hat purveyor company where Momo could pay to get one done. She had also decided to use the name Momo Aizaki. It made sense considering that she had the Vatican after her. I was kind of embarrassed that she was actually using that name. I had just thought up out of nowhere. You know, somebody somebody made a comment, and I, I thought it was the funniest shit ever, because it was something I was thinking of, not when I was recording the episode, but afterwards. It's that scene from Family Guy where, you know, he's trying to make up a name, and he just, you know, just comes up with Peter Griffin, P-Tier, and then Griffin. Hmm. 
You family guy enjoyers will know what I'm talking about. It's a beautiful scene. Yeah, why were they here? I thought this was like a like a alone moment between these two. So, I guess everything is just uh, all hunky-dory then. Jesus, I keep forgetting about her. Momo still wanted to go it alone. Jeez, talk about stubborn. Wait, there's a photo of him out there? Okay, well, I guess this is not public knowledge. Or pencil and paper. Unless this is something that's more accurate, whatever this process is. We taught her how to use the app, and she spent about an, uh, half an hour drawing. Oh, what is it going to Oh. That's actually not bad. All things considered, since we're, you know, just playing the game here, and everybody already looks like an anime character, because they are. Like, okay, it gives us an idea. It gives us an idea on what he wore, so he's got, like, a coat. And, you know, a tie and a shirt. A dress shirt, if you will. Um, I, I don't know if he was smiling. I, I guess I guess that's uh, facial features that she came up with. But the hair is also going to be very important. Okay. <laughs> I have no faith, but yeah, let's go with it. I had no idea how naive that was. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, there's there's a whole bunch of people here in the world. Two hours had passed since we started. There is absolutely nothing on the internet about Sikita 3301 or 3301 or Kent Korihisha. Obviously, we couldn't find a thing about his time at the Vatican either. Which, in a world, you know, controlled by technology and internet and all that, I'm sure that's very easy to do. Sikita put up the first of his uh, quests in May last year, and it was supposedly posted from somewhere in Ochinomizu. That info was discovered independently by someone Momo knew, and it wasn't available anywhere else. That's why it wasn't too weird that there was nothing about it on the internet. But Momo said that she'd come all the way to Japan on that one lead. That was actually the reason she went to the Ochinomizu crater before we met. <laughs> We didn't know where Kent Koreisha was from exactly, but even when we looked at the entire country's records for people with that name born around 1990, we didn't get a single hit. It was always possible that paper records of his birth were filed at some facility near his birthplace, but finding that would have taken ages. That made sense, and there were probably tons of people who wanted to make a name for themselves by unmasking Sikita. I would say that there's probably a whole bunch of trolls over there as well, pretending that they do know some stuff about him, or found out about him, or whatever, but... At the same time, these are hackers. They're not idiots, though there's probably some that, you know, have a little bit too big of a head, if you will, and uh, get, a, get ahead of themselves, and maybe want attention and all that, so, I don't know. I'd like to think that people are civilized to a manner. 
Maybe he was actually a fictional character to start with. The more I investigated the guy, the more plausible it seemed. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so there we go. Any fake information or anybody, you know, saying this or that without a follow up, without any like hardcore proof, nobody's going to take anybody seriously. So I guess that's how they get around the trolls. There was also the fact that the wrong kind of post could put the Vatican on our trail. Well, yeah, exactly. Why out ourselves? Also, I'll finish this line here. It is worth noting, and I saw this at the end of the previous episode. Oh, wow. Okay, never mind. I was going to say we've got two additional save slots after four. This one, when we were experimenting down in that crater. Actually, you know what? Okay, no, wait. This is right. This is right. So this was actually made whenever we got back here to, to Symphony. But this one was made before we went and met with uh, Oz. And this one was made, I guess, whenever we got back. But there was no, like, indication that this save was made. But it does make me wonder that something is going to come up eventually that's going to, you know, lead to us utilizing this save or maybe even going further back so let's uh let's be on our toes if it ever does seem like okay we need to get out of here i gotta be ready momo probably knew about them too but i needed a refresher okay when had gathered all the information he could find about the quests he was the best resource we had as he said that, he started caressing his own arms. It looked like some weird... This whole character is just so freaking weird. Huh. Alright. I, I, I think I get what you're saying here, but... I think we should also read the tip about this. What a strange character. So it is a paper-like input device made of silicon, a material used in semiconductors, and can be cut up and changed to the user's preferred shape. While the material's high electrical uh, resistivity is an obvious benefit, this technology's true value lies in that it enables electron orbital data to be both planned out freely and printed easily. Normally, electrons bound in atoms are unable to overcome the energy gap. But rig mesh technology has made it possible through the physical intervention of something as simple as human fingers. Being able to cut the device up as one wishes allows for many creative designs, letting it be integrated into fashion. This aspect is especially popular among younger hackers. Another reason it receives so much support from hackers is that its sheer input precision stands far above that of all other wearable devices. All right. I dig it. It's weird, especially with whatever he's doing here. I think it's just this guy, like, just him in general and how he's always bouncy is just, that's, that's what just puts me off. You could execute the registered commands by touching it with your fingers. It was basically just an input device like my keyboard. It wasn't like you can get the desired results by touching it however you wanted, though. The commands changed depending on how you touched it. Wynn's input motions were really exaggerated. That was probably because he thought he looked cool and wanted to show off. Well, I don't think he looks cool. And I am definitely put off. Normally, people calibrated these so that they'd require only the bare minimum movement. Shikeda we had participated in two of the past quests. When they came in, hackers the world over desperately tried to analyze the resources Sikita provided. 
The quests were so tough that even wizard tier hackers were left scratching their heads though. We tackled the quests without any preparations. Of course, we couldn't pitch into the effort that much. Damn, we got rankings? Okay, well, there's a couple names that immediately stand out. Obviously, we got Daru, not even in the top three. Embarrassing. And Kojiro Frau. Yeah, she's still up and, I guess, doing what she does. But Juno. Juno. All right. That's our number one here. Ah, Sikida3301 would cause the incidents he hinted at whether they were analyzed or not. Not a single hacker had been able to stop them, and people had died. And then there were these weirdos treating the whole thing like some party. How did that point system even work? A little curious about that one. Being up at the top got you attention from fellow hackers all over the world, as well as individuals and companies looking to hire white hats. Well, who's in last? Like, how many, how many people are ranked? Let's get an idea of the scope of the competition here. What the fuck? Well, how does, how does the whole ranking work? If it's not organized by Sekida, then who is organizing that? Because again, there's like that whole point system. How, how does that even work with the quest? Wow. Well, whatever. The rankings didn't matter. Hello, we are looking. Oh, okay. Hello, we are looking for highly intelligent individuals, and to find them, we have devised a test. There is a message hidden in this image. Find it, and it will lead you on the road to finding us. We look forward to meeting the few that will make it all the way through. Good luck. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, why are you freaking out? What? Oh, wow. wow, what coincidental luck. Yeah, that's a little too scary, actually. That is way too fucking big of a coincidence. Yeah, sorry gamers, I don't believe in coincidences when it comes to this series. He didn't have to spell it out. I knew it was a coincidence. Alright, what do we got? So, hello, we are looking for highly intelligent individuals. To find them, we have devised a test. Uh, there is a hidden, there is a message hidden in this image. Find it; it will lead to the road finding us. Okay, so it's, it's pretty much what we just read. The gall does say that when he was planning some kind of disaster, I really didn't like this guy. If we use some specific method to analyze this image, we could find a hint leading to the incident Sikada was plotting. Momo was staring at the image with an intense expression. ポロンさん、私はおれが一度や二度断られて引く男じゃないのはもう分かってるはずだぜ。でも、そもそもクエストは簡単に解決できるものじゃないだろう。Oh, I know, but okay, wait. So these quests they lead you to learning about an incident before it occurs. So, the possibility to prevent said incident is possible, right? Kinda? Maybe? But at the end of the day, we're not doing this shit to prevent an incident or to learn about it. We're doing it for a whole different reason. Yeah, 
But now we got the smoking hot babe who needs our help, therefore we will do it. For plot relevance, we will get this done. And, and nobody is standing in our way. Momo gave me a little nod. She knew about the saving and loading, too. Oh, yeah, we have an infinite amount of time when you think about it that way. It was still way too mysterious and suspicious. But we didn't have the skill to get to Sikita 3301 using normal methods. There we go. And then I would drag Sikita 3301 out into the open. He could count on that. So I guess we will, like, try to prevent something. Wait, what did you say? Hold on. I was busy talking. Oh, come on. Don't say that shit, Wynn. Come on. Wynn still believed that Momo was my girlfriend and that we were eloping. But it would have been a real pain to explain the whole story. It's funnier if we keep it this way. I don't know why we're so gun ho here, but whatever. We have a we have a, a plan of attack, or at least we have a goal here, so we ball. 4chan analyzed the image rapidly. We tried all kinds of stuff ourselves, but we were pretty powerless compared to the collective knowledge of 4chan. First, Sikita had posted the image of a flower. Okay. It had been treated using... I have no idea how to pronounce that. Steganography? And an analysis revealed some text in Esperanto? All right. You know, I'm not the brightest cookie in the jar, so let's, let's read what these say. Or what they're all about. So this is an artificial language created by a Polish man known as Ludwig Lazir Zamenhof. And it was intended to serve as a second language for communication between people with differing mother tongues. As of 2037, there are said to be a million people who speak it worldwide. And now this is the act of embedding information within other information. When used in IT, this is called digital watermarking. And people have become familiar with things such as image files having additional data embedded inside. Data embedded by digital watermarking can be extracted using dedicated software. I think this exists today. I think this is used today with like copyrighted material that you can obtain. I think it's like, okay, let's say you download a, uh, a stock image or something. I'm sure that there's some data embedded in that stock image that states more about it, how only legally you can utilize it, like you have the license to utilize it if you obtained it correctly, this and that. I think that is what this is about. But maybe this is going a lot further because, you know, scary future and technology and whatever else. So what do we got here? The text was a riddle and solving it produced another riddle and so on. But here is a website, cicada3301.com slash uh, all that shit. We'd ultimately arrived at a certain URL. And what do we got? That is where we found this image, which contains some letters and numbers whose color made them stand out. J-A-1037-E. It was the number of a passenger plane. It was a regular plane that went to and from Haneda several times a day. After we got the hint, we monitored J-A-1037-E carefully, and nothing seemed to miss, though. Night fell as we watched, and the airport closed before long. JA-1037E stopped flying for the day and was currently parked at the Ninoy Aquino Airport in the Philippines. Sorry if I completely butchered that. The hackers on 4chan had concluded that nothing would happen that night. With that in mind, we decided to call it a day and go home. But, I feel like there's a but here. I couldn't leave Momo at Symphony all by herself, so I took her to my place. Symphony was, was safe, sure, but there was no bed there, and it wasn't an ideal place for anyone to stay for days at a time. But, uh, this is also, you know, having a girl here in our room, in our young mind and all that, you know, yeehaw. 
It was really late, but Momo wasn't sleeping. She was staring at her BMI, intently following the quest progress. Also, what a what a room. I mean, it doesn't look anything too crazy, but there is a lot of old tech here. Or at least it looks like it. I mean, that's a that's an iPod right there, no? And obviously just a regular laptop that looks like a, maybe a little like server or computer there to the left of it. There's a bunch of discs or CDs there. Uh, that looks like an old-fashioned phone. And then we got some banger monitors with some monitor stands. Which, by the way, I should probably get myself some monitor stands or arms because, goddamn, they look, uh, they look nice. Also, fun fact, because I think a monitor arm would be fantastic for, like, you know, my neck. But, um... I'm, I'm pretty much like looking straight ahead whenever I use my computer. I've got a pretty okay stand with my monitor, but uh, my microphone arm blocks the lower left of my monitor. So sometimes I have to like peek over a little bit and kind of like, you know, see the, see the little picture, see the name. So uh, it does suck whenever there are visual novels where the text goes even further than it does here. Like, this is perfect for the text. I wonder if there's, like, any, like, big references here. I'm not really into music. It looks like there's, like, some music posters on the wall, but I'm not really into that. Or I'm not too into, like, I, I guess, big, older music, if you will. Uh, there's some cars over there on the left. I don't know if those reference anything, but yeah, I'm bad at like pointing out references. Let's just go with that. Damn. I left the room to get something to drink. But as I walked, I stopped in front of my dad's room. It hadn't been touched since the day my dad died. It wasn't like I wanted to keep the memories alive or because I thought he might actually come back. Man, homie's got a fucking, like, that's a Mac. That's a Mac Studio or whatever they're called. You can tell because it looks like a cheese grater on the front. I just didn't want to be reminded of him. I was his son, but he would never really paid much attention to me. He'd spent all his free time after work sitting in his room just working on something. That's how he spent his days off, too. He always seems so distant, working away with his back to me. It's his back that comes to mind when I remember those days. He never once turned to look at me. <laughs> this was the first time I thought about my dad in a while. And I was just fine with that. I clicked my tongue and went to close the door. What the fuck? Why are, why are we remembering this? Why is this coming back to us? Why, why are we remembering all these scenes here? You know, from timelines that... That's loud. Yeah, from timelines that no longer exist, mind you. Th those are all timelines that we kind of erased. We went back. We're, we're doing our own thing now. The next thing I knew, I was lying on the floor. Momo was right in front of me, looking at my face with a worried expression. No, I don't think we are okay, but while I'm at it, because those were cutscenes, I guess I can just lower the volume of uh, the movies, because Jesus Christ... I think that is the volume that will help. I looked around quickly. This was my house, right? Uh, do we need to jump? No, we do not need to jump. But hold on. Anything different here? Um, okay, that's the one we just made right there on slot eight. So no, nothing... Nothing is different there, so what the fuck was that about? Yeah, honestly, I felt like everything I had ever experienced suddenly rushed through my head and flashed before my eyes. Isn't that like a, a premonition? Like we're about to die or something? Yeah, she was right about that. Okay, but if we're, if we're quite literally about to die, then what's going to kill us? I was overcome with heavy fatigue and my heart was beating extremely fast. I didn't know what had happened, so I just sat there for a while. Yeah, that kind of that kind of spooked me. I wasn't really expecting all that. VR dive mode oh, oh. <sighs> Following the child, before him, uh, there was the large spherical monitor. It displayed the Earth, at least the Earth according to Gaia's simulation. 
Asuma uh, looked away from it, spinning his cube-shaped device over and over again. It's a fucking... It's a Rubik's Cube look-alike, you know? Come on. We don't have to call it a cube-shaped de device. We can just say that it looks like a Rubik's Cube. An exact display of the simulated scenery Asuma had been watching appeared on the control room's monitor. It showed the intersection between Loop 7 and Koshukaido. It was the place where two days ago a young boy and a girl had had an altercation with the army. Not exist? What do you mean? Oh no. Just now that we're we're doing this uh this scene here with this guy again, I, I have a very bad feeling that we have most definitely not seen the end of the fucking cop idols or whatever they're called. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, what did he just say? What what did he just say? How do I check the fucking backlog? It's not this. Okay, well, whatever. Okay. But okay, Juno, that was that was the number one name on the fucking on the fucking rankings. Yeah. Oh. Damn, we got some fucking movement going on here. I don't think there's like, I don't think there's anything to gain by making anything public. And like I said, and what they also said, they don't want people on their ass, especially the Vatican. Okay, but how did she arrive here? Okay, hold on. I'm I'm curious about that. Whatever that is. Damn acronyms. Short for Global Ballistic Point-to-Point -point Transport System. It is a ballistic-based movement transport system between two points on different continents. Research on the system was started in 2013 by a joint Japanese-European project called Hikari, and it was first put into use in 2024. By using a rocket-like ballistic flight, this system achieves movement transport speeds far greater than that of planes. A flight between Tokyo and Rome, for example, lasts only about an hour. However, BPTS holds a major issue in that it requires specialized bases for launching and landing, which are currently far fewer than traditional airports. Okay, now with that in mind, he's saying that she was spotted at a base for that? ちょっと待て。BPTSだと?え。その約20分前にローマからの貨物便が大いに到着しています。向こうのBPTS基地でも彼女の目撃証言が。so was she like a stowaway? Okay, wait, what does this say? Seen at BPTS, Rome base, eyewitness. And then about half an hour later, BPTS flight to we departs from Rome. And then we have an hour later, BPTS flight arrives at Ui. And then about another half hour later, caught on camera at the at the base. And then in the morning, caught on camera. Seen in for okay, so then we're we're caught up. Okay. Okay, wait, 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 this sounds stupid, but 3.14, right? Wait, chapter 2 is cleared. What's happening here? Okay, so this is actually one of the complaints, by the way. This doesn't look good, whatever that is. This, this really doesn't look good, whatever this is. Um, People were, were stating that there's no subtitles here on these cutscenes, so unless you're actually... Playing with the English dub, you have absolutely no idea what the fuck is being said. Or if you know Japanese, that's a plus. Definite plus if you if you know Japanese. 
Okay, we're following Momo. Okay, you know what? That's right. She has that foresight or whatever. Okay, things are about to really pick up then. So we finished chapter two. We're now into chapter three. We ball. Nah, that's that foresight. God damn it. What was I about to say before all that shit happened? I was going to say something too. STS普通のため航空無線へ切り替えました。302 予定航路から外れています進路を戻してください他の機を退避させてくれこのままでは 302 I think we got a problem I think we got a little hijacking issue of some sort maybe or something along those lines Okay wait what's going on here 4 Chan Nothing unusual so far. Got on board to death. Guess this flight isn't it either. Where the hell's the quest? It's almost time for the plane to land. What if yesterday's code was fake? Sick of to do your job. Damn, yeah. You know, cause chaos, you know? What, what else are you here for? Wynn wasn't a part of Nakano Symphonies, but he provided us with a load of info wherever there was a quest going on. God damn it, what the fuck was I talking about before we ended the chapter? Something about foresight? No, it was before that. God damn it. Ugh. Okay, wait. They're talking here. Maybe someone solved the quest already. I totally solved it already. Hey, don't let your guard down just yet. It felt unnecessary before, but I really appreciated it now. Damn, we just got a fucking plane tracker going on here, huh? So JA1037E, designated for flight 302, took off from the Ninoy Aquino International Airport, or however you pronounce all that fucking shit, in the Philippines at 6 a.m. JST. We had been monitoring it since takeoff, but hadn't noticed anything special or quest-like about it. It was due to arrive at Haneda Airport in five minutes. Oh, but we about to have some fucking crazy shit go down. Momo said that she had seen a vision, so we couldn't relax just yet. I'm glad she's talking about it. Why are you coughing? She was having a sudden coughing fit. She was holding the seven cup that I'd given her so she could stay hydrated. Yeah, soda's not going to fucking keep you hydrated, honestly. I had no idea it could make people cough like that. Her words brimming with confidence, she took another sip of seven cup. Seven up. Which is also really good, and I can go for that right now. But all I got is some fucking body armor juice, which is still good. Momo kept coughing for a short while afterwards. Yeah, I was pretty sure that was her first seven cup. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, 4chan's hackers started going crazy. What do we got? Something is wrong. Isn't it going off course? An emergency. It didn't land. Sigata 3301 is on. Here it is. The quest has begun. Let's do this at last. Wait, okay. I'm not reading all that shit. Let's see a wizard tier hacker is uh, is capable of. Get moving, quest rankers. Let's check the code again to see if there if there's any hint we missed. Let's go. I'm also looking at the names really quick to see if there's one that sticks out. Damn, information gets around quick. What if, like, you know, I, I don't know if I brought this up earlier, but sure. So, Sikita 3301 putting these quests out, you know, as a game for fun or whatever, but is he really the one behind the incidents or is he just completely aware of them and is making a game out of the knowledge he has? Flight 302 was almost full with over 200 people on board. If all those passengers were in danger, there was way more at stake on this quest than either of the previous ones. I hoped that that wasn't the case, but we barely even had time to hope. She said that she was unsure, but her gloomy expression said otherwise. Yeah, I'm glad that we can be, uh, you know, such a hero and all that. We are making a lot of saves here. 
We were keeping a close eye on what was happening, but the situation was changing every second. Yeah, we're gonna see some fucking disaster here. But afterwards, that means that we'll be able to go back and maybe prevent the disaster? We were looking at the news, social media, and whatever else we could get uh, find to get as tight a grip on things as possible. The first thing we had to check was... Wait, what does? The URL he sent me had a voice file. Okay. Are we going to listen to it? It had been machine translated so I could understand what uh, what was being said when I played it. Excuse me. Okay. We had already heard this. Wait, so it wasn't a hijacking? Or like a different type of hijacking. So do, does the tower not necessarily hear them? Was it just a system error or... Alright, what does this article say here? Yeah, so airports across the country have begun installing the STS, which is the Sky Transmission System, which utilizes satellite comms lines for communication between control towers and aircrafts instead of traditional aircraft radio. It functions the same way as aircraft Wi-Fi, but the satellites used are dedicated to STS. Aircraft radio will not be disposed of, however, and will instead act as a backup system. The first airports to employ it on the 15th are Haneda, New Chitose, Hiroshima, Fukuoka, and Naha, with installation going in or ongoing in other locations, and it is expected that all airports will have STS running by 2033. Yay, technology. Cross took in hand the folded device that was hanging from his belt and then pressed on its handle. It unfolded. Next, he docked the circular unit in the middle. What the fuck is this shit? The upper part of the unit rose slightly, exposing the LED lights hidden around it, and it began to spin at high speed. Slightly above the LEDs, Cross began moving his hands like he was both communicating in Morse code and DJing. That was his input method. Okay, I see. Yeah, get to rubbing your arms and shit. Wind got to work too, striking weird poses and submitting commands with exaggerated movements. And while they were busy, I doubt I was the first person with this idea, though. Okay, so we saw this, too. So, yeah, everybody is trying to access this one fucking plane. Sure enough, the plane was overwhelmed with access attempts coming from around the world. It wasn't easy to connect under these conditions, but if I could pull it off, I'd probably learn something useful. Momo's eyes were burning with determination. She must be feeling a real sense of duty after seeing that vision. I shared an access tool with her and taught her the basics. She picked it up fairly quickly and got started just as fast. Using STS and Wi-Fi would allow us to know what was happening inside the plane, so I figured I might as well focus on the outside. I chose a contact and suddenly heard some music. Was this one of those ringtones? Right as it stopped, an avatar comprised of a 3D scan face appeared at the edge of my vision. Huh? The Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport, and Tourism? Now? Okay. 
Okay, all passenger planes flying over Kanto region ordered to land. Okay, that makes that makes sense. Land immediately. Now that makes sense given the uh, the situation at hand here. I ended the call for now and looked at Momo's access tool. It read connected. That was surprisingly easy, actually. My own connection was being destabilized by countless others trying to connect. It could cut out at any time, so we, could, we couldn't waste a second. I ran my fingers over my keyboard. There was no time to target the plane's system, so instead I went for... I hacked into one of the passenger's tablets, then turned uh, its camera on so I can see inside the cabin. It's this easy nowadays, huh? God damn. All right, what do we see? A chair? I could see way more if I hacked into someone's BMI, but their security was way too tight to hack in such a short amount of time. I moved from tablet to tablet looking for a decent angle. Okay, so we've seen... Okay, we're, we're seeing a little bit of everything that was shown in the vision that Momo received. So, this is why I thought it was like a physical hijacking. Like, there, there's people there that are, like, harassing this flight attendant. It, it kind of does make it look like, okay, there's people in charge of this plane here. Or, or some people that, like, took charge of it, if you will. The whole plane was panic-stricken. Most of the passengers were still seated, but the rest were anxiously walking around or shouting at each other, terrified. People were standing in front of the cockpit door. They were shouting at the pursuer to let them in so they could speak with the captain. And there was one thing I didn't see, though. No, I think this is all remote. I couldn't see a single person using knives or guns to terrorize the passengers. They just wanted to get in and talk with the captain. I uploaded the recording. I got to pick drop. Okay, there's a few tips that I need to read. What do we got here? So PickDrop is one of the better known online storage services of the year 2037. It functions as a data storage device that can be accessed from anywhere provided an internet connection is available. There are many such services, but PickDrop is one of the most popular choices among hackers due to its high security. Okay, we know what an avatar is, but we'll read this anyways. Because carrier nodes are not equipped with cameras that record the users themselves, the faces displayed during BMI-based communication are not users' actual faces, but renditions based on facial data acquired from a 3D scan. Since the scanning process captures all kinds of expressions, the avatars are capable of displaying any emotion that might be appropriate. Isn't this the same shit that is going on with the Apple Vision Pro or whatever they're making? And I think Google is also making something too that utilizes this utilizes a sort of avatar technology, I think. So we just learned about the STS and machine translation by 2037. Every OS comes with a pre-installed machine translation function for both text and voice. The translated spoken words are recreated after an analysis of the speaker's voice, giving the post-translation output the impression that the speaker is fluent and there is almost no lag during this translation pro uh, process. Cool, cool. This really isn't the time for that. He actually used girlfriend. What? Oh, okay, yeah, I see, I see. Pulling in his girlfriend's moment of love, youth, and triumph. I was gonna get the third degree from all the hackers I knew. Cross had figured something out from his Haneda airport hack. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that it's all done remotely. You're not going to have a, a suicide bomber on the plane this time around. So there weren't any hijackers because the jacking happened remotely. Yeah. 
I'm surprised it wasn't done many times before. And we got a lot of shit here on the screen. I'm not really looking at what they're saying. I'm looking for names. Boom. And there's our quest name, Hijack. Wind shared so much info that my whole field of view was buried with text and images. I closed it all and used my own app to check 4chan. The hackers were realizing this was all part of the quest and going wild. It should be carrying extra fuel, but that'll probably last an hour tops. True, planes often fly to other airports due to things like thick fog. An hour, really, could you be more vague? 41 minutes left, what you calculated, he probably pulled the math out of his ass. Someone used the remaining fuel to calculate how much longer the plane could stay airborne, and then distributed a countdown app moments later. And I guess there it is right there. Wow, people work fucking fast here in the future. There's never a good reason to mess with people's lives like this, especially not so many at once. Only the greatest hackers could get anything done in such a small window, but quests were never generous with their time frames. We just had to work with what we were given. It's actually crazy that so many people can just easily hack in like that. Yeah, and they can't do anything on their end, and they're physically there in the, in the plane. They had weird outfits, but they were pretty good. Shit, if we find a source, anything, you know, that is helpful in the long run here, you know, once we do our jump, which I'm sure is something that's going to happen here, all of this we're definitely going to have to throw away and, you know, try again with additional information, I'm sure. But if he, if he is actually able to find something, that's going to be gratefully useful here when we go back. With all the channels dead, that seemed like the obvious thing to do. The other hackers must have been trying the same thing. All right, what's in the news now? Suspicious happenings. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Suspicious happenings on hacker-centric social media. TMPD investigating. Wow. Yeah, just great. Fantastic. But would the obvious course of action really solve a quest? If it was that simple, people would have completed one of the others. I had to change my perspective and think outside the box. I don't know, scream. I could tell from her expression that she really didn't expect me to come back with another question. Her expression turned quickly from shock to serious, though. Yeah, but where would we look? What are, what are we going to attack here? Momo's input helped me think outside the box. She had a point. Everyone was too focused on existing methods. I mean, we were short on time, so I couldn't really blame them. Yeah, if everybody's doing the same thing... I mean, it's pretty much whoever crosses the finish line first. But, you know, it's all about that parallel work. Let's see what else we can do. But that's exactly why I had to throw all those methods aside and restart with a blank canvas. What else can we throw into the mix? Yeah, wait, so... What what is Poland thinking? Right. Oh. Oh.コードを直接打ち込むんだ。その機上の空論がお前の作戦か？議論するつもりはない。We're gonna use the fucking captain as a middleman for for our work here. If we can't get to the plane directly, yeah, just a middleman. But getting to that middleman is going to be pretty tough here, all things considered. 
Ah, he ended the call. Well, he did say to get back to him, so he must have been down with my plan, right? I wasn't totally confident about that, though. Actually, I was getting kind of worried. Man, this wasn't the time for his vague bullshit. He could have just said yes or no. Adults are such a pain in the ass. Well, what else can we do, you know? Looking for ways to open a new channel, I checked the articles I'd been looking at this morning for anything useful. Alright, so it says here, We all take airplane Wi-Fi for granted these days, but how many of us actually know how or why it works? The USA and other countries with plentiful land have radio towers the planes can connect to directly. But since such towers can't be built on water, island countries like Japan and planes flying over the ocean connect to geosynchronous satellites instead. A, si or a signal is sent from the surface to the satellite, which is then sent down to the plane equipped with a special antenna, and once caught, the signal then passes through the access point before finally reaching the devices of all of us on board. I was actually kind of worried. I, I, I wor wondered, not worried. I wondered about that. I was recently watching like a, uh, a it was a documentary on 9-11 and everything, and just like back then, well, Wi-Fi didn't exist, but shit, even like TV signal at the time, how that all worked. 302 was, oh wait, I did not read what that fucking said there just a moment ago, or at least I don't think so. Oh wait, no, I did, okay, we good. 302 was equipped with an antenna to receive signals from the surface via geosynchronous sats. That meant that signals sent directly from the surface wouldn't reach it. Hacking into a place with antennas that could send signals into geosynchronous orbit was way too difficult, though. While scrolling through the articles, I noticed a diagram that made me realize something obvious. Sats weren't the only things that could fly over planes. No, no. Alright. Oh? So that's what a drone was. Relatives of Flight 302 passengers demand that the case be resolved. Well, well yeah. Thousand Air, the cursed airline company, it was involved in other past incidents. Cool. Do we have time for that? It really is all hands on deck here with 36 minutes to go, which is now 35. Man, we got on the bike real quick. All right, I think we will end the episode here, though. I've recorded quite a fucking bit. I really lost track of time here, actually. Jesus Christ. Um... You know, I gotta be honest, I don't think, you know, saving over saves is a problem. We can't save over these saves, but I will go to the second page here. Why not? We're on the third chapter. Cool, cool little logo there. Doesn't that kind of, you know, or icon, if you will. Doesn't that kind of ring a bell? But all right, there we go. We are now in chapter three and things, uh, things are getting a little wild, but it's crazy how fast and, you know, or not how fast, but how much focus we are putting onto this, despite the fact that we may need to jump back. You know? I, I don't want this all to be for naught. I think as long as we find, like, a solution and save everybody, then yay. But I feel like there's maybe a better way of going about this if we were to find out significant information beforehand to prevent there from... to prevent there ever being a scare or a situation in the first place or something. I don't know. I guess we'll just have to keep on grinding and see what happens here, but... Oh, man. Wild stuff. I mean, the brakes are just never really applied here in this game, huh? Well, thank you all for watching this episode. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz, and I will see you all in the next one. Take it easy.